everyone and welcome back to Stock Career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8 and I was thinking of maybe doing a VTOL. I got an idea for a VTOL anyway. Bring a newly discovered- well that's not an airplane thing, none of this is airplane stuff. Samimony? Samimony? Samimony and Samimony's scrap? Huh. Explore Duna again. Well, this is transfer any crew between vessels near Duna. Still need a surface outpost on the moon in Minmus and an orbital station around Ike. Did we... What did we... Did or we... There's the... Dres probe is on its way. We are... Um, we're here. Dr uh, Duna is behind us, so that's not a good transfer time. Um, not a good transfer time for Jewel either. Okay, well, so we can't really, but, but we can launch the Moon and Mimus. Let's get the Moon and Mimus things first. Antenna, docking port can generate power, five Kerbals. Antenna, docking port can generate, well. The thing is, that we use, we did not use parachutes. So yeah, it should be able to do it, right? We'll send it to the moon first, or... Yeah, we'll send it to the moon first and then amend this. Okay, here we go, and launch. Very calm music. If I was really silly, I'd take this, land on the moon, uh, and get enough Delta V so I could land it also on Minmus, so that we could fill both contracts with the same base. That would be, that would be a good idea-ish. Well, at least amusing. Hopefully they'll work on a contract system in KSP2 that won't allow you to do such nefarious things. Two core, no hyper threading. I swear, I mean, the original Celeron was just one core, wasn't it? Way back when, or was it also two core? And I'm just misremembering that. So we've got these um, cargo storage units with the full inventory thing. That's probably why it costs so much. Got all those fiddly bits. So, for the first time ever, uh, I managed to create a 3D character, a humanoid character in Blender, uh, rig it and import it into Unity, and had it use the default Unity third-person controller animations to walk. So, things are progressing. The UI is a huge difference, yeah. I had to get used to a lot, too. It doesn't take as long as you'd think. I figure making an anime character is probably going to be best at this point. Um, because the expectations for realistic textures are not there, so I don't have to go into great detail on, on that, on the features and all. The downside is, I mean, I guess... Differentiating characters is somewhat easy, just change the hair color, <laughs> but... Um, well, uh, it, it'd be the same if uh, you, you you did coding. Uh, you watched me code, Thalarut, I'm sure. <laughs> there's, a, there's a thing there. Moon base. We already did a moon base, so I, uh, whatever. Coding bit is easier. Yeah, but I'd still probably do things that would make people lose hair. We've still got a trivial amount of Delta V here. So, um, we had done a resource scan for the moon before. Right. Watching the... This is the first time you've watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Bluegill? He asked incredulously. <laughs> Come on. No, not giant cost wreckage. No, I want the moon. Obviously, I'm an old-time Tolkien fan. We should try and land up there. We've probably got enough Delta V to swing that. You watched all three in one day. That's like an achievement. <laughs> Well, I like the books from back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I sort of like that style anyway. 
Okay, so we'll, we'll go for that patch. This patch is not quite so... Br I mean, daylight-wise, it's probably better to land here because we'll get more power immediately, but I don't think that's going to be a big deal. We'll see. Anyway, decision time. Well, Asimov is very... He's... T t He's very idea-oriented. Um, yeah, very idea-oriented. I, I, I don't think Tolkien needed to spend a whole lot of time introducing these ideas in a way. And so Tolkien is much more lore-oriented. And like uh, old folktales, takes pains to mention people, you know, because uh, legendary people, uh, when you're... Uh, Oh, Conan, yeah. Yeah. Um, which is a very different depiction than, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan the Barbarian. But anyway, but... Uh, yeah, like old, old epic stuff where people were actually reciting it out loud. You know, the listeners wanted to hear about great heroes they had heard of before for, from somewhere else. So, you know, like in the Iliad, you have to, you know give lip service to certain heroes and all that, even if they're not really involved in the action and tie things in, you know, certain gods have to play a part and that kind of thing. So that's, uh, that's something that you get from Lord of the Rings that isn't quite normal. Thanks for following Cat King. Asimov is also hard to read for different reasons, yeah. Um, you have to be somewhat involved in the ideas. Yeah, I, I, uh, I watched the cartoon ones too. And there, there you had a minstrel singing, you know, Frodo of the Nine Fingers and the Ring of Doom. See, it's, it's more that style. They, the cartoon actually captured the style of what Lord of the Rings how Lord of the Rings is supposed to be presented in a way. The Cave of Steel is probably the most uh, approachable, yes. I'd say Caves of Steel is the most approachable one. Classic sci-fi? Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna... I mean, if you consider Dune classic sci-fi, that's my favorite. I tend to read the second book in the series. First time I read Lord of the Rings, I read Two Towers first. I just, I this, this is a thing that happens. I ro well again, I robot is solely idea oriented. I mean, there's, there's nothing, nothing really storyish about it. Oh yeah, let's stop here. Uh, this seems to be a flat patch, I think. Yeah, it's a short story thing, but you know, people can write short stories and still have them be compelling. Uh, for modern writers, I like uh, Lois McMaster Bujol. Recently, I picked up uh, um, what you call it, Mary Robinette Kowal's uh, Mars book. What was it called? It was actually the second in the series. Again, I haven't read the first one, but once again, I read the second one first. And I thought that her depiction of the relationships between the characters was especially good. Um, the Fated Sky was the one. Dragon Riders uh, Pern, uh, I liked, uh, though um, I don't know, it te technically it is sci-fi once you get to the backstory, but Red Mars I found too depressing. I didn't get to Green Mars and Blue Mars because it lost me on Red Mars. I've read uh, Moon is a Harsh Mistress, but some of that's very dated now. The ideas are also not as palatable anymore. Weber, yeah, my father likes Weber and Ringo. Lord McMaster Bujol is sort of a interesting thing. Some... It's mostly intrigue, though. But I like her writing. 
Yeah, of course, Lord of the Rings is an interesting co-opting of uh, folklore because folklore is usually focused on great heroes and such. But here, uh, Tolkien focuses the camera not on all the heroes involved in the story at all, uh, but, well, not the apparent heroes, but uh, the, the Frodo and Sam, right? I mean, of course, he discusses the doings of the other folk, but... You have unassuming heroes, unlike the normal situation in folklore, where uh, you generally don't have unassuming heroes. They're not generally modest types. And of course, you know, people miss that aspect of it because they're so used to it now. Because uh, the formula's been copied so much, but it, w it wasn't done that much back then. Yeah, in the novels, if you haven't read the novels, the way it works is, especially on the second and third one, half of the book is devoted to Frodo and Sam, and the other half of the book is devoted to everyone else, more or less. Can't see anything as a lander if it doesn't have legs? So far, my landers haven't had legs at all. Well, does it fulfill the contract? It fulfills the contract. They never said on the new surface outposts on the moon contract that it had to have legs. Okay, we need to send one of these to Minmus. Then we'll make we'll try to make a VTOL. That's my plan for today. No, no, I mean 2001 A Space Odyssey has nothing to do with the writing style of Tolkien. Um, the 2001 A Space Odyssey is not structured like folklore. They, there aren't any songs in the middle of it. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. 2001 A Space Odyssey doesn't, doesn't uh, bear any resemblance to Tolkien. Oh, well, music, yeah, music, music, but not, not singing. Music and song are somewhat different. Uh, telling a story through song is different. Pace, though? Yeah, but pace is not a... It's what you do with it that counts. <laughs> it's what you do with the pace that counts. Uh, 2001 is very, very slow. Uh, much slower than Lord of the Rings, but... Um... There's, uh, movie, uh, comparing the two movies, there's a lot more reverence to what's being shown in 2001 than Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is a little bit more comic booky, actually, to be honest. Um, the books, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, 2001 is much shorter than Lord of the Rings, uh, or many other books, actually. Uh, the speed of the book is pretty good. Lord of the Rings is much longer. So actually, the movies versus the books are reversed. Books are good. Um, some books are made to be turned into movies like The Martian. <laughs> Martian book and movie are virtually indistinguishable. Spooky bits, yes. Thank you very much. And... Deep, but... Depth and... Well, it's a matter of in the same amount of time. A movie... You know, there's a picture is worth a thousand words sometimes. If a movie is well done, it can convey more in two hours than a book can convey in two hours. But you spend more time on the book. So... If you're speed reading, you're not getting what you should out of it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, comparing time to time, a movie can convey quite a lot if it's well done. Like... Uh, an example would be like Brazil in two hours or something that's very well done. Hello Algo. Be uh, the thing is uh, a movie that's uh, just an adaptation of a book is not so good. The movie really has to be made as a movie because movies can do things that books can never do. But if they're just trying to adapt from a book they're not gonna be able to do those things. Um, like 2001. 2001 it was a movie first, then a book. I mean, the, the book is in, sort of uh, was done in parallel with the movie. Skipper? No, this is actually the mainsail. I just wanted to get this off the ground quickly. These are even more expensive. Um, Skipper is very good, but not 
only it, it used to be better, but that's before they introduced the bobcat. Now the bobcat is good. If you have two bobcats, basically four nozzles at the bottom, that's probably a better configuration than just one skipper. How long until daylight? Okay, there we go. Movie adaptation of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, it had been a TV series and a radio series, and uh, you know Douglas Adams uh, sort of knew what he was doing with those two. But uh, and you know uh, the the humor from Hitchhiker's Guide. Let me just get this off the ground. The humor from Hitchhiker's Guide is very similar to the kind of humor you get with Monty Python, and there's a sort of history of that kind of humor in British TV and radio. Monty Python itself was. Um, inspired by the Goon Show, which was a radio show. So, yeah, there's sort of a, a tradition of that kind of humor in British stuff. So it was made it easier to adapt it. To Bobcat, yeah. You don't need an engine plate for the Bobcats. They surface attach. You can, uh, you can skip that. For a book to really be worth it, books can give you interior dialogue, what's going on in people's heads, much better than a movie can. Um, but, uh... Movie can convey through the set design things about the world that a book can't really describe very well. Um, or in only a limited fashion, or unless it wants to bore you with details. And so the, the movie can imply things about the world, and you'll notice things about the world, without it ever being explicitly said. Which is nice in a movie, to have that ability. Oh yeah, yeah, the Star Trek books. Yeah, I haven't read any of that. I, I really didn't read into the Expanded Universe for Star Wars or all the Star Trek stuff. And... That's largely because I feel like it was made for- or Babylon 5, there are Babylon 5 books as well. I- I think that they were good in their main incarnation, and I prefer them that way. I like, you know, Star Trek- I mean, I don't know, I didn't really get into Discovery, but, you know, as a TV series, I like it. The movies have been here and there. Um, Star Wars, I like movies mainly focused on movies. I'll eat up their movies, but I made this go too far up. Yeah, I love Alita. Alita I love. I, I love this so much I got the co the original comics. Yeah, I and I've got the Blu-ray, so I like Alita. I don't know if I had a favorite, but I was fascinated by it. I don't know if any other comic book thing has quite the cast of villains that Batman does. So I, I always liked it for that. The others play by certain rules, but the Joker is the chaotic evil of chaotic evils. He's sort of the ultimate chaotic evil character. I, I think the attempts to give him a backstory are not warranted. The Joker is sort of... every movie tries to give him a backstory, and that's probably the least necessary thing ever. He's sort of like the embodiment of just chaos. Comic book-wise, I have a little bit of respect for DC because of the Vertigo imprint, and Sandman, and Hellblazer, and that sort of thing, which were very serious sorts of comics. I've got the entire Sandman series on my shelf, you know. I wasn't very much into comics, so, you know, I just took them as they came. I mean, the thing is, uh, I was into, like, magic cards, and got those from the comic book store, so... <laughs> I don't know why people would rip on DC for not being dark enough, when DC sort of started out the whole dark thing, didn't they? At least with, uh... With some of the Frank Miller stuff, I thought. Oh yeah, DC, and then of course Vertigo is really dark, so I mean... We haven't really scanned Minmus, but if we really need to relocate the base on Minmus, I don't think that'll be too hard. Oops. 
Video games? Yeah. Well, same here, though I think we played different games. Well, except for me, Wing Commander. I don't know if you were into Wing Commander. I was mostly into airplane and space games and sports games and strategy games. RPGs, not as much. You like Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I was a kid in the dawn of Pokemon cards, so Yu-Gi-Oh was for younger people. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I didn't stay very long on Pokemon cards, so it was mainly magic. I, ha I have a variety of different card games still in little boxes. Not just magic and Pokemon, or I got quite a few. I didn't play the Star Wars training card game, no. That one I did not. I don't know when it was released. Magic never became popular in Turkey, there's still time. <laughs> There's still time. Well, I never was introduced to those board games. Board games like I wasn't introduced to uh, Catan. We we did tabletop RPG and the card games, but uh, not. And for tabletop RPG, it was mainly the White Wolf ones. Um, a little bit of Final Fantasy RPG, but yeah, not really into board game board games. Probably we're gonna land on this side. I guess we might as well go for the flats. White Wolf? Yeah. I've heard of this Traveler RPG which is sort of sci-fi-ish. Well, heck, even I, right now, am uh, sort of on the side catching up to things I missed when I was a kid, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Thought of it as a war game? Well, it has war in the title. I, I only ever saw the little figurines, that's all I know about it, really. Oh, uh, Gothic, uh, Battlefleet Gothic Armada is Warhammer 40k. So, technically I have access to playing that. Any specific goals? We're just landing a base on Minmus because of contract. After that, we're, I'm gonna try and do, make a veto. Not because we have a, a contract for it, but uh, just out of curiosity. We've got enough funds to sustain a side project at this point. But I wanted to knock out two of the contracts so that hopefully we'll get some other better contracts. I've always wanted to write uh, like mysteries in space, you know, like Sherlock Holmes or Agatha Christie things, but in space. Sort of like uh, Caves of Steel. Ah, yeah, those, those sci-fi. Yeah, I did not read those, though I know of them. Completely over the top? Yeah, I mean, there's some of that. I, In a way, Outer Worlds is a little bit over the top. It's not as over the top. I like that. I mean, I watch Japanese TV shows. I like over the top, right? I mean, it's like half of all anime is absurdly over the top, too. Uh, they've probably been translated by now. Hey, we got the Witcher. I mean, you know. <laughs> Mass murder with... What is this, a Monty Python skit? So that's what that Monty Python skit was warning us about. How to defend yourself against people attacking with French fresh fruit. Yeah, okay. The Indian guy killing a bunch of people with banana. I think I can miss that safely. And I, and I want to just put it out there, not all India, Indian guys, okay? <laughs> really. Uh, we don't all go around killing people with bananas. I'll take the drift. Physics rules get broken in almost every movie. But no, I mean, 
Have you seen Marvel movies?